It's been a while, but welcome back to Dusk City Outlaws. I'm your host, Newbie Spud. Today's crew of thieves, the Cackling Crows, stars Lazarev the Magus, played by Oblivious. Yo. Jackram the Brawler, played by Strong Copper. Yellow. Viola the Thief, played by Sonny. Servus. And Kren the Assassin, played by Creeper Zone. I was going to say yo, but someone already said that, so. <laughs> Change mine to ER if you like. Retroactively, <laughs> got it. Previously, in New Dunhaven, the Cackling Crows took on a job to steal the Opal, a sailing schooner that, uh, schooner, schooner, I don't, I never know how to pronounce that. I looked it up it's last night for Pete's sake. It's a boat that, sm- <laughs> that smuggles for the Blooded, which is the rogue cartel that does not, uh, agree to the arrangement. Uh, the cartel known as the Red Lotus Society wants the Blooded off their docks, but before that, They wanted a group of thieves to commandeer the ship and its cargo, bring it out to sea to meet up with a town and ship. The crew has already scouted out the dock and hired a few hands to man the ship once they take it, but there are a few more tasks remaining. The plan is, drug, out, drink, and otherwise debilitate the the blooded day crew, uh, recruit a captain and more men to commandeer the opal with, obtain blooded sailor costumes to disguise the whole gang, and subdue the enemy captain, and then the next morning... Storm the dock in disguise and overthrow the ship's crew before anyone can react in time. Hopefully. Is that, does that sound about right? I know it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah, sounds about right. Pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So we ended the last session with a planning scene where we decided on uh, what this was going to be. And that happened during the second day segment. So this will be the second night segment uh, where we uh, start off on all your legwork things. But before that, uh, let's, uh, confirm everybody's starting stats. Uh, Oblivious, you're still at 100 luck and 1 influence. Uh, Strong Copper, you're at 80 luck and you have spent your influence. Sonny, you are at, trick. you are at 70 luck and you still have your influence left. And Creeper Zone, you are at 80 luck and you have your influence. Yeah, that, a- and that adds up on, on my notes. Have, yeah. There is 16 heat for me to play with so far and as the uh night segment begins that jumps up to 20 so have fun with that i'm expecting dwarfs with cannons i don't know about you guys (laughs) (laughs) Eh, maybe not dwarfs but some guy with an artillery cannon obviously well it's it's got to be somebody who can can pop out of a fridge or a or a small confined space otherwise it's not funny so uh let's see uh, who would like to embark on their legwork scene first? Which I I believe... Actually, I need to pull the original doc back up because I didn't mark down who was leading which legwork on the new document. So Sonya was going to get costumes. Strong Copper was going to uh, drug the blooded sailors. Oblivious was going to recruit for a captain in more able hands. And Creeper Zone was going to find and subdue the enemy captain. So who wants to start that mess first? Let's go with the costumes first. All right. So, so. Uh, looks like I'm going to need you to spend your influence to base, yeah. you know, use your contacts in the... Uh, Armors to get a, cost, get, a, get a rush order on costumes done for, uh, from whatever theater. Yep. Uh, you basically go to, uh, you, know, a little, you know, whoever the costumes person is someone who's good with disguises in the Mummers cartel. Uh, and they're a little wary of making blooded costumes because nobody really likes the blooded. They're kind of creepy and, uh, you know, not not terribly friendly to the other cartels, but somewhat reluctantly and, you know, because you're using your influence, your, your money and contacts to sort of bring in this poll, bring in favors. They're like, all right, how many do you need? Oh, what, like... <sighs> A dozen and a half? Okay, I'll get a rush order out. Should have them by the morning, I guess. Thank you very much, John. Ugh. And also, bring them by before you head out for this job so we can, you know, paint them up a bit. The bud kind of sort of like to paint their faces a bit. It'll help with the disguise. Okay. Make them look like they have blood- bloody noses and mouths. Mm. Got it. All right, so that one that one's just pretty simple. That's just a quick bit of leg work. It's just spending influence, which does most of the work for you. Uh, so you have now 
the costumes you'll need to uh, fit yourselves and uh, hopefully a dozen men. They'll be, it, since they'll be rushed out, they'll be authentic, but maybe not totally fitting. So, uh, and you, you also don't know if you have all the men you need for, for this and what size they'll be. So, uh, so it's probably ill-fitting, but will be enough. Uh, enough, Hopefully. enough to, to add a, you know, if you're in a big group, uh, and at a passing glance, no one will really question it. And of course you'll, you'll have the makeup done a bit in the morning. So well, we'll just take their jobs very seriously. They're, they're not as much, uh, uh, disguise specialist as, as the Vespers cartel is, but, uh, the mummers, I mean, the, the blooded, the blooded outfit is so ostentatious. It's red and it's, it's multi-layered and it's, you know, all that. The mummers are actually probably a better fit for making these outfits than the Vespers are. Yeah. The Vespers might outright refuse. And also the mummers are probably better at improvising a good enough costume for us, like impro theaters and such things. Yeah. All right, so that leaves three legwork scenes remaining. Uh, yeah, anyone want to step up to the plate on that? I might as well. Uh, Let's get drunk. So you have, uh, thanks to the newest circle veterinarian, uh, files of a chemical that uh, works as uh, sort of a sedative or depressant. Uh, you know, something that will that will knock out a man and make him a little groggy in the morning with the note attached saying, I hate you all uh, <laughs> out of character. She definitely considered attaching that note to the, <laughs> to the vials. Didn't we steal yeah. the vials from a warehouse? Oh, right. Yeah. You, yeah, you, you, she, she gave you the location of a warehouse and I'm still found a way. Hmm. All right. I'll need someone with me who can actually, you know, split that kind of stuff into people's drinks or something. Well, between uh, the Magus, the Brawler, and the Thief. Gee, I wonder uh, who has the sleight of hand. Um, <laughs> well, I can steal something. I can pick a lot. It's all very specific. It has no sleight of hand, but concealing an object would probably be pretty close. Well, you do have the plant benefit. When you pick someone's pocket, you can leave something on their person without them noticing. Which uh, isn't really the same thing as slipping something into someone's drink. Let me, let me see if I got some. Or maybe I could just just hypnotize with us. You want to drink the shit? <laughs> uh oh, shit! I actually do have a name for to convince somebody. I forgot about that. I uh, I think convincing actually. someone to to drink something against their will would be, at the very least, have some great drawbacks. Actually, oh, just a just a possibility. What exactly does this stuff, you know, the drug itself actually look like? Um, it's a clear liquid. Yeah. Does well, it have a smell it to it? Or? Uh, it does. So, it it has a bit of a like, bit of a fume to it. I don't know how to describe it. Sort of alcoholic. So it's uh, you know, actually, not, like, like, like not like like booze alcohol i mean like medical alcohol you know rubbing yeah, alcohol more, more like um, uh, disinfectant than drink than whiskey yeah yeah am i yeah, about to drink some from aldehyde what the hell <laughs> what role would it be to slip something into a drink I'm, I'm trying to figure that out i probably should have uh thought of that sooner uh okay, i was gonna what I was about gonna suggest what about was, distract was, some wait no no it wouldn't be distract some. um I'd probably think it's sneak around or conceal object. Conceal an object, yeah, or you can, uh, I guess, distract someone and then just say you do it. Yeah. Mm. But, but conceal an object is probably the closest closest one. Yeah, I have I have it at uh, 65 to conceal an object. So do I? I've only yeah. got a 50 in that, so I can't help with that. I've got a 65... So I can have an attempt at it, but probably not the best at it. Yeah, same here. That's what we all have. Or apparently, maybe not if we had, yeah. maybe if I just start out drinking them, that way they'll be drunk enough that we have an easier time just slipping them stuff. Well, you you, you start drinking, and then then we start convincing them to drink more, and then eventually they'll just be they'll be gone. Uh, eventually, the drinks will be spiked. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah. So you're not, you're not, you're not gonna, you're not gonna spike the drinks at the outset, but uh, you Mm. know, once everyone's all. Right. Honestly, it seems more. It seems more like a save the spiking until unless we find someone who's actually who seems a bit more resistant to alcohol than the others. That's actually a good point. I I, I can't believe that this crew has developed this strategy of just <laughs> set, send the drinker in to to route it up with uh, with your, the enemy with the enemy goons and your uh, liver's going to be the size of a raisin by the time this is over with. You do realize that, right? I lit- I dig graves for a living, and I'm a thug for hire. I d- I don't plan to live long enough to for this to be an issue. Well, that's depressing, but okay. <laughs> All right then. Uh, so, uh, you know of a uh very dangerous and skeevy bar where the blooded uh on this stock all sort of most of them at least gather. Uh, not all of them. Some of them, you know, do other things than drink themselves stupid but uh this this particular bar is very dangerous and they and they you know kick out anyone who's not like them so i say probably what you do is uh use the costumes that or at least like get like one of the costumes that viola just uh commissioned and yeah. disguise yourself as a a blooded sailor because if you oh I I forgot to ask are you bringing anybody with you or is it just you because oh, if you if you come in as you are very you know you are a mummer's assassin so you're normally dressed very ostentatiously but if you are dressed in the mummer's color as well you're you know you're going to start a fight you're rather than start die. a drinking contest I'm with, not a mummer I'm a grave digger or yeah sorry no yeah you're grave digger right I was looking at the wrong character <laughs> your your grave diggers are also very conspicuous yes I was yeah. I was gonna go for the whole blood of disguise thing a bit. All Let's right, do this. So yeah, uh, um, I think I was bringing what the f- who was I bringing? I was bring. I know that someone was coming um, with me, like like Viola. Viola went Wait. last time. Yeah, last last time we go to the winds mob and then. Well, I mean, uh, I, I, actually, if if I go, but between you, you can go and and I can convince them, uh, and I that I won't even have to use sorcery for that one. Alright, yeah, sounds good. Pro- yeah, sounds like a good idea. So Jack Roman Lazarev and just the two of them? Yeah, it seems yeah. like a bit mo- a few more and it'd probably be so, I, I, don't, so. I don't know if uh, I don't know if Viola is still coming along. Maybe, maybe send in the two biggest dudes and, and there might make it a little less uh, uh, yeah. less conspicuous. Yeah. Uh, in a normal bar probably Viola would come but not if you go into the blood blooded because she would stand out just because he, she's neither really muscular nor big male. Yeah. Mm. I could probably pose as a waitress. I don't know. But uh, anyway. So two of you then, uh, Jackram and Lazarev, uh, you dress up as blooded and uh, thankfully uh, Stroll at least get through the door and it's just absolute an absolute ruckus all these these very tough armed men uh with you know all sorts of uh red markings all of them scarred all of them you know experienced in doing deadly deeds all just uh you know having a laugh with each other and and uh there's a bit of gambling going back in the corner and Playing the knife game. Uh, there is at least one man unconscious on the floor, whether from drinking or being beaten, you don't know. But everyone seems to be giving him a wide berth. But there is there is more than a dozen men all crowding into this small this small dank bar. Mm. And all is of the them guy all on, of them blooded. Is the guy who's on who's on the ground unconscious kind of on the way to the bar? Uh no, he was sort of around the back tables. Yeah. All right, never mind then. Jackram's gonna get gonna get himself a spot at the bar. All right, and I think I'll join him. <laughs> and someone nearby says, "Hey, what kept you two so long?" Okay, Jackram's gonna just turn to see who called out. It is a random blooded thug. Yeah. R- random, <clears throat> random blooded thug number. Th- 
number seven of eighteen, whatever. Just let's get get so long. But got down and turn a blank. Um, I took the scenic route. Yeah. <laughs> had to see if had to see if Polly was working the streets tonight. Ah. What to do? He he nods as if he understands. <laughs> I'm glad someone gets it because I didn't. <laughs> no, uh, seriously, what the hell did say? <laughs> no, he just, I literally just answered, just had to see if Paul, if Polly was walking the streets tonight. Effectively, just saying we went to see a hooker. Oh, okay. I, I thought that's what you meant, but I wanted to be sure. So, anyway. So, I guess it's time to begin the work, which I'm guessing is going to be out drink someone uh, mm. from Jackram. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll feed him cash. Uh, you give yourself booze, and we'll, we'll get this started. Sounds good. And since you're trying to, well, actually, I'm gonna say first off to get you know the sort of you, you, if your intention is a drinking contest with the entire bar, you're gonna need to roll, uh, goad someone first, and then out drink right. someone. Uh, goad someone. I'm gonna say is. Because it's the entire bar and full of these thugs who are hardened thugs. Uh, I'm going to say it's probably two challenge dice. Let's do ten. We believe in you, Jackie. Go, Rum. Well, that is quite the success at seven out of a hundred. <laughs> but with one drawback, which I'm going to say is as you start goading people into being like, hey, I can out-drink you. Hey, I can out-drink... I can drink you under the table, mate. Uh, this uh, rather burly, like, you know, half-giant of a thug, you know, was like, oh, really now? And he's he's a bit, at least one sheet to the wind, but, uh, you know, he starts poking this big, sausagey finger into your chest. <laughs> and it looks like he's he's... He's probably, you know, actually going to pick a fight before you start drinking more. He's like, you're not so tough. I can take whatever you can throw at me, but I don't have to put up Cup with is... this. Jackroom's going to punch him right in the fucking face. Oh, no. Uh, give me a... I'm, I'm literally disguised as... Literally disguised as a blooded... I'm, I'm renowned for being violent. It, so you just gotta punch him in the face and say "shut up and drink." Uh, give yeah. me a strike, someone uh, with uh, nah, no, no, no modifiers. Right. Well, that works. You uh, punch him right in the face, and he staggers back and bowls over a table, sending glass clattering. There is a picosecond of silence from the entire before. <laughs> Before it, from the entire bar, before it erupts into greater and greater noise, you get pushed around a bit. But uh, uh, it seems like everyone's kind of riled up now, and you're like, "Okay, let's let's just get to drinking, huh?" Right. So come on, come on, big guy, put come on, big guy, put your money where your mouth is. Put your money where my fist you. You uh, <laughs> you seem to have endeared yourself a bit to to the guys by just punching out the biggest guy in the room. <laughs> like he he gets up and he's like I ain't even mad. <laughs> the fact faction rank up the blooded honored. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly gonna honestly at this point I'm just gonna help just gonna help the guy into his seat. Just finds his done time to get drinking. So uh I'm going to say uh well, okay, so you start drinking. Uh when or if do you start applying the uh the extra sauce? And who's in charge of that? I mean I, I guess know. since I'm I'm not the one drinking, maybe I should do it, but I I don't know. I don't think either one of us has a good uh conceal uh item or anything. Right. Well you, you can't just, you can't push I, your luck have... if you know, if it comes to that. I know, I'm just thinking maybe we should just see how the drinking contents is going at f first anyway, just before se we try to sneak it in. Because let's face it, if we can drink them all under the table just normally, there's no real point. Fair enough. Uh, I'm going to say out-drink someone 
with uh, four challenge dice. And Oblivious, uh, it's going to be hard for you to not get drawn into this, you know, given the atmosphere that Jackram has created. Uh, <laughs> so if you're not careful, you're going to end up drinking under the table as well. You're going to need to to find a way to uh, avoid that. And your liver, I'm going to guess, is possibly not as hearty as Jackram's. Probably not a weakling, but probably not, you no. Know, I probably can't stack stand up to his cast iron liver. Yeah, uh, your your out drink someone is fifty percent because it's anything else. So, I'll be honest. The trick here is by the time the liver starts to be a problem, I know the other grave diggers. I can get people who can get me a new liver. Jeez, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know he's not wrong Maybe. there. <laughs> yeah, right. black black market organs, sure. <laughs> um. Because you can just you can just hot swap those out and it'll be fine. Actually, I got a, I got an idea. Uh, do you do you remember do you remember in the Emperor's New Groove where they have the whole poison scene and Kronk looks like he's drinking, but he's actually just pouring it down the side of his uh, face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can I? Uh, would that be? Um, uh, actually, what the hell would that fall under? Now that I think about it, um, I'm, of hand? I'm going okay. to. There's no sleight of hand skill. There's, there's someone? specific. I'm going to say well, yeah. it's uh, distract someone because you're going to need them to be not paying attention to get away with like uh, well, surreptitiously dumping your drink somewhere else. I mean, I'm probably not doing that with all the alcohol, but like just occasionally, well, it's like uh, it's a, okay, I'm 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 starting to feel a little tipsy about halfway through. Maybe you know you know when everybody's already had a few, maybe start doing that so I'm not completely smashed. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, so, uh, Jackram, roll out, drink someone. I with, did. You did. Success with w- one drawback. I throw four at you, you give me one. Uh, and mm. Oblivious, roll distract someone with, uh, uh just, just one challenge. Cause most of the focus is on Jackram. Uh, how do I roll the, it's, uh, 1d100, uh, colon, uh, one. what? Uh, semicolon. Uh, one d ten e five, and five. Oh, I messed that up. I uh, said one d five. One d ten e five. Okay, I, I gotta get used to this. <laughs> you know how you know somebody get a new liver from, but do you know somebody who can put it in? That's a bit more pertinent. <laughs> also, the grave diggers. We're the ones that have the knowledge of medicine. Okay, so I yeah, I succeeded at the. I just barely under sixty-five, and I ended up with the challenge die. So what happens is, uh, you succeed in like you you remember an old trick where if you if you want to look like you're drinking a lot without actually getting yourself wasted, spill you spill a lot. You know, you accidentally spill your drink frequently, and it's you know like oh I'm I'm you know I'm goner. But the drawback is uh. You are so convincing that you just can't hold on to your drink, like literally, just it keeps slipping. That uh, the bartender's like, "Okay, you, you're cut off. You're done. Way faster than my... everybody else." <laughs> I'm on my back. Okay. So, you, fair enough. You you are you just like super lightweight, <laughs> but you are you are you are physically sent away from mm. from the bar. Uh. And as for Jackram, uh, you succeed with one drawback, which I'm going to say uh, that uh, a good majority of the uh, blooded have been drunk under the table by you now. Uh, and you're a bit wobbly, but you're otherwise fine. But there are still a few of the, like the really tough guys, like the one who, you know, came up to you before, who... Uh, you know, still seem fine. You know, as as these things go. Good a challenge. But I guess while I'm also doing the drink contest, I'm gonna gossip with criminals. Use that as a what use that specifically as a uh, are you trying to get out of this? Particularly, I'm gonna try and find out just where where I can get myself a firearm, since they they seem to be becoming a lot more a lot more pro- prominent in the blood of these days. That's 
I mean, any sort of gunpowder weapon is going to be kind of a big secret. So, uh... I know, but they're drunk. They seem to like me. I'm going to say... I'm going to say three challenge and one uh, advantage, which is a D8. Wait. Oh, whoops. Whoops, I didn't do the thing for... Well, I I, I know what the... I know what the success would be. So, um, hmm. you get you succeed barely, uh, but you get two drawbacks. And so you ask about all the pistols, and one guy is like, "Oh, yeah, we're 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 stealing them from from the uh, from Red Lotus is what we're doing." And then he gets immediately punched out by someone who looks to be his superior. Is like, "You shut up about that." And you, he rounds on you. You don't seem familiar. He's, you know, drunk like everybody else here. But he's looking at you with suspicion now. Why are you asking all these questions? What a don't ask questions. What a just do. Does want to know where who I had to punch out to get a, get myself a gun? Well, stop asking. You'll get your gun when the when the the capos decide you get a gun. Fine. Fine. Now we, now we drinking or what? I don't know anymore. Or, what's to, a drink? <laughs> uh, he's 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 sort of you know swaying, but now he's looking squinty eyed at you. His big ugly face. Yeah, if you want, if you want to back, if you want to back out now, there's no shame in that. You've outlasted us, outlasted the lightweights. He grabs you by the the collar and gets right up in your face and is like, "No, I'm not done with you just yet. It's just, you're being real." And his breath is terrible. You're you're you something ain't right here. This is Dude, you're this drunk. is we Dude, still you're got drunk. A... That's what's not right here. Maybe you should just go home and sleep it off. <sighs> All right, but I'm gonna see you tomorrow. And we ain't done mm-hmm. talking about this. Fair enough. Just sli- try not to try not to get yourself in trouble on the way, ha- way home. Uh, yeah. This. Uh, I don't know why I let myself get this far. And he stumbles out the door. You hear a thud mm-hmm. outside. I'm okay. <laughs> Is there anyone left? Or um, there there's a few people still standing, but uh. The jovial atmosphere that you created when you goaded everybody has started to die down, and there's so many people on the floor, it's kind of depressing. <laughs> yeah, right, I guess we can call it here. Just might as well give a toast to those left standing. Just, just another not, another notch on Jack of Liver. Just, well, we won, people. Drinks on the losers. <laughs> and proceed to take their wolves to pay the fight. <laughs> so we stole a crate of Horse tranquilizer for nothing. Yeah, I guess. Seems like it. Yeah, we can give it to the veteran. I'm pretty sure she would appreciate it. Well, I mean, <laughs> we can always hang on to it in case we ever need it again. Save us the We're trouble. definitely going to use that eventually. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Okay. It is an asset you possess. And I will say you weren't totally successful in like debilitating them for the next morning. Because there's still a few of them standing, you know, relatively tall. And, you know, a hangover is one thing, but, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. So, mm. That's okay. We can we can exacerbate that with loud noises and flashing lights. Mm. And that's why Ooh, there's two members on the team. Loud noises. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can. And to be fair, we... If, yes, there's going to be some people left standing, but the majority of them are going to be impaired, if not having t- not turned up at all. Yeah. Which is ba- which is basically the goal we were going for. Mm-hmm. Boss, I think, I think I drank battery acid. I ain't coming in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you're wanting to... And I guess there wasn't really much of an opportunity with all those peop- with all those eyes in the room. If you wanted to actually, you know, drug them, you probably should have, like, intercepted the alcohol or something. I don't know. 
Yeah, well, hindsight. We'll think. We'll consider it next time. Well, this way we have still have the, all the tranquilizer for whenever we need it. What what we what we need to do eventually is actually ob- obtain a bar of our own, so we <laughs> so you can uh, just in mummers. Buy we bar. have all the ins. <laughs> yeah, the mummers are. Hint, hint. Anyway, but how much influence would it cost to buy a bar? <laughs> Too much. Well, Jack room's that... gonna go and go somewhere where we can get the. It's gonna leave and go somewhere where we can get changed into something that isn't a blooded uniform because. Honestly, it kind of makes him feel dirty. It's probably soaked in alcohol. Or that's probably just me. It's not the alcohol that makes him feel dirty. Getting a, getting your own place would be more like a job reward or XP expenditure sort of yeah. thing. So oh, as how for, many people do we have to kill to get a bar? Well, yeah. we ha- but we can more or less rent a bar, a bar as a sal- safe house yeah, for one month. Yeah, you can place. you can temporarily gain the use of a, of a facility probably with influence, but actually gaining you know the deed to such a place that'd be a little more challenging than just. Uh... Well, I think the pros just set themselves a goal. Well, yeah, now we have long term plans. <laughs> All right, uh, so there are two legwork scenes remaining. Uh. One to recruit and one to subdue. Who wants to jump up to the task? Uh, I guess I'll go with recruitment because because we got. To. Uh, what is your plan generally to finding a captain and uh, and and more crew members? Didn't we already grab some crew members? Yeah, we, you, we you've did, got you've got like we got Steve and some higher stuff, but we need oh, more. Oh God, I forgot about that. Actually, <laughs> I still don't um, trust him. No, no, I don't. But <laughs> I, I trust them more than the dudes we're fighting, and that's that's the important. That's sorry, a, sorry. Who, who, which, who are you talking about again? Uh, uh, one Steve of our from last time. Is Steve. Oh, right, Steve, the drunk sailor. I, I, I forgot about that last time. It's been a while. Um, mm, I, I originally had a plan, but it's it's been weeks. Um, um you were probably going to go to the circle. Oh right! Uh, no, no, I, I meant that there was there's more to the plan. I was also gonna, uh, uh, as a as a secondary part of the plan, because I didn't figure it was that much of a detour. Uh, I was also gonna try to see if I could find as many uh as as much uh as much kindling and uh, uh, incense burners as I could. Kindling and incense. Yeah. Make it look like the ship is burning. Because you're planning on on smoking out the uh. And smoking out the crew once we got in. I don't recall that part. I put a lengthy post in it about the. Oh, oh you um, discussed it on the Discord after. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that I I was going off of the planning scene in, uh, the actual episode. So, I'm I'm pretty sure it was mentioned. It, it was it was mentioned, but I hadn't fully fleshed it out for for a long time. Incense burners do not generate enough smoke to flood an entire ship and make them think it's actually on fire. Well, I mean, specifically, like, uh, it doesn't re- really require much. I mean, if nothing else, just like some some bowls with some dried leaves in it or something effective enough. Don't ask me why I know this. <laughs> if it's bowls and dry leaves, that's easy enough to obtain. Yeah. Fine, you can, you can grab that. But uh, the problem with smoking up the ship... I have to say, is that then you have to man a smoked out ship. Well, I mean, obviously we're gonna we're gonna tell the uh, tell the relieving crew beforehand so that they know that it's not on fire. Yeah, but they're still gonna be breathing smoke. Might have to. Uh, ooh, I wonder. I wonder if maybe uh, before you, we you, actually you st- cannot obtain a dozen and a half gas masks. Well, I I, I know that I. Can. I was just wondering who might, and I was like, oh, maybe the grave didn't have something like that. Now nah, we'll we'll figure it out. All right, this this was this was a bit of a curveball. Uh, I'm so... assuming you've run the the suggestion by the rest of us, right? Yeah, obviously. Well, we could just improvise with just some sort of damp cloth or something. Just has just has to cover the face long enough to get it long enough to get us out of port and air the ship out a bit. All right, let's just get on with the late work, and we'll burn that bridge when we come to it, or that boat, depending. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 
I'm gonna say probably you're gonna end up spending your influence on this to uh pull the strings and get some uh get some actual circle uh crew to help uh man this ship though they won't be that experienced but they can follow orders enough yep and, just need to be strong enough to handle the rigging that stuff yep and uh see the circle based uh based off the vladov and their turf is mostly centered around you know prison so i don't know if they would have too many captains you might actually well actually them. actually they might because in in the uh background for it um a lot of uh a lot of the um the ones that did originally escape actually uh, a lot of their ships were seized along with the captain and their goods and all that stuff yeah. so it's actually not all that uh yeah, but that, was, that, that was that was a little while ago but yeah okay you could probably find some nautical captains in the circle and uh hire one of them to join your uh join your little gang and then uh enough able men to temporarily take control of a ship uh give me a name for a circle captain just a a, a mm. name a name for a man isaac isaac I, i'm not against it isaac will be, isaac will be your uh Works. will be your uh captain for the duration of the handoff and i can't think of any distinctive traits about him Scar Scarlet bisects a beard. He has a peg arm. It's <laughs> <laughs> one armed Isaac. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, there actually there isn't there a cartel that's just like pirates and band anyway. Uh having the new rules but having a bunch of these part ones is a bit frustrating. Well that's why we're trying to knock him out. That's why we're trying to knock him out. Anyway. Uh so Spend your influence, get uh, the rest of your crew, and you now have the men you need to potentially uh, man the ship and take it out to sea. Yep. Uh, it's only you know, out of the out of the dozen men you've got, plus the captain, about a third of them actually have sailing experience. The rest are the rest are just thugs who can follow orders well. But uh, those guys can at least fight, so there's that. At least they, they, you know, they're hardened fighters. They're minions. So once again, you're, you know, partially a boss. You you have your uh, your own squad of about eight. Woo! Yay! Uh, so yeah, which just leaves I think uh, Kren's legwork scene. Uh. And I'd be very interested to hear about how you imagine Kren going about it. Hmm. Now, uh, um, before I actually do this, I'd like to ask, would any of the other characters not be against killing the captain and specifically tell him not to? No, he's a blood, he's a blooded bastard. What the fuck? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, good, good. Guys, people die. Just, this line of work happens. Unless anyone particularly wants to interrogate him for some reason. No. Then let's kill. Then let's have a little. Leave a little bugger dead in an alley somewhere. So the the plan is a set just straight up assassinate the captain. I want yes. I want to find him. I want to track him down. Uh, to try to find a time where he's alone. Sneak um, up to him and stab, stab, stab. <laughs> Although I, I would, I, I would, approve this plan. <laughs> I, I I would recommend though, while none of us I think are interested in interrogating him, might want to check his person and see if he's got anything on his uh, any kind of orders, per personal effects that might uh, that what might is, be given. What in the world is that in the background? What of CZ? I have no idea. Wait. Yeah, it sounded like distant wailing or something. Mm. Well, it's gone now. I there was just something screaming outside of my window, and I have no idea what. Okay, then. <laughs> oh, hey, it's a doggo outside my window. Hello, doggo. Hmm. I guess the question is, do you want any assistance or backup on this one, or um, do you think you'd be better off just going in alone? Well, it's going to be a stealth 
definitely very stealthy. So I doubt uh, Jackram or uh, the Magus Magus Laz Laz. Laz. I never remember your name. Uh, would help, and I'm not. I mean, Viola could come along if she wants. Yeah, but I don't. I don't really. I'm not really good at stabbing or. You're a thief. You like. The, yeah, these, I can these be stealthy. Are not, and... These are not really good at fighting. Yeah, yeah, I, but I mean, I, I can avoid so. fighting like hell, but I can't actually stab someone better than anything else. You don't even Suggestion. have. A, you don't even have a combat Suggestion. skill. Suggestion: Thieves are good at distracting people and all that, right? Yeah. You can create opportunities for someone to get stabbed. Yeah, that sounds good. So Viola come up, will come along and distract the captain if they fa- find him playing the damsel in distress. Even I mean, to yeah, either, it'd, it'd be good to have you on backup, uh, as long because you it's not it's not like you would make it that much more hard harder to do. Mm. You're pretty good at stealth, so. Anyway, yeah, Jack Rim's not good Worst stealth, case scenario, so. you get caught and I just leave. Yeah, Jack Rim's not good at, you know, stealth and everything. The kind of backup he would provide is if shit goes wrong, he kills everyone. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Would, do you want to come along? Yeah. Alright. Well, then, I guess I'll start off by trying to hunt him down. Try to find out who or where he is. Hmm. I guess that would be a locate someone. I was 65. Yeah, just uh, roll that with a advantage die because of... Uh, two advantage die because of uh, Viola's scouting casing the joint around the docks. Uh, I believe that should be it. Uh, one more advantage die. Oh, another one? Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry, you. No problem. There you go. All right, so that's one. Uh, succeed with an advantage. Uh, you manage to uh, find out that the captain of the the Opal, uh, basically, uh, when the ship's on land, uh, sort of rests in his own uh, private quarters, not on the ship, but nearby on solid land, uh, with a uh, you know, basically a contingent of, of guards watching over him. And you can uh sort of let's see, I can tell. Uh you don't have to detail him, you can just know where that is. And uh right. he is you figure he is just about ready to turn in for the night. He seems to be he's probably you can kinda of see like a silhouette in the window. Uh, he's going over some papers or whatnot, and there are uh, guards outside and inside the building. Um, would I know how many guards? About uh, probably two outside the the front door, and then two outside his uh, bedroom door. Um, so we should go in for the bedroom window. Yeah, I was gonna ask: Is this uh, how's the where's the bedroom located? Uh, with it, the Rio. it is uh it is on the second floor of this building. Uh and there would be windows? Yeah, there's there's windows. I I mean yeah uh um, Viola, question you could, you could, could I forward. use the Viola second story back to get up on a ledge or somewhere I can help uh Kren get into the window and then just follow after him? Um you can find your way into any building by any way you choose, without being seen or heard. You can't automatically get uh, Kren inside. You can automatically yeah, get... No, I mean, that I get to a position where I can grab him like, like, if, he, if he doesn't make it in time to assist him. Not that I get him in automatically. Uh, Viola is going to pull me up from the window. Basically. Yeah, you, you get inside and then you help him get in through yeah. the opening you made. Yeah. yeah then Viola will typically make a the well, well, which, and the what jump. what op- what opening are you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Do um, you want to go directly into his bedroom, or do you want to like go uh, outside? I would go the for the for like the ledge of a of his bedroom window, then help you in, so we can actually enter the building together. If that's okay. Nah, second story work means you enter the building. Okay, so I'm already inside. Then 
I think we should still go directly for the bedroom so we don't have to deal with the guards immediately. Alright. You're gonna go directly into his bedroom while he's still inside? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think we should yeah. probably go to a side room. Like, it just, just, we're not directly in an, like, there's two guards. Okay, uh, yeah, okay. Then we'll go, like, the window right next to his bedroom. Alright, that, the, which is, I don't know, just records office, probably. Yeah. We're, 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 like, most of the time, we are like, a backflip and a jump, and then pull up, pull Kren up if he needs, it's, if he needs to assist. Alright. So I will roll some. Uh, assume. climb, I think. Climb, jump, tumble? Yep. And no modifiers. Yeah. Vial is basically paved the way for you. Yep. You do so. All right. You are you are in the adjacent room. It is dark. There's a bunch of papers and records around about various maritime stuff. Probably nothing juicy in there. Uh, there is a door to the to the hallway, the upstairs hallway, and is there a safe in the room. There is not a safe in the room. Not in this room. Uh, there's a hallway, and then to the to your right. You know there uh there will be two guards standing outside uh the bedroom. I'm gonna read my abilities for a second. Okay. Alright. Uh I could just run out there and attempt to kill uh knock them both out with one attack. I I would get two advantage dice. Uh but if you could somehow distract one so they could get alone, it automatically succeeds. Okay, yeah, then, huh. So, you want me to distract them? I can do that. Your attacks against Megan's lone minions automatically succeed if they are not aware of you. There's two of them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you could distract one again yeah. and walk, uh, one, make one walk away, I can automatically succeed that one. So, should I just, uh, yeah. Question is, how do I, how can I manage that I'm just distra- getting one of them out of, uh, away? Uh, I mean, they'll probably, they'll probably just one of them would leave, so one can keep carding the door. And if both of them leave, then I can just go and kill him, so it's a win-win. Yeah, yeah right. So, uh, Viola will more or less stroll up to the, both, to the two guards, doing her best to enhance womanly f- features. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> when I meant distract. Maybe not that. I don't think... Okay. So, okay, in that case, why don't we just, um, um, more or less go up to them and wave to them and say hello for probably being for walking over, uh, walking along and trying to get uh, at least one of them to follow her. Uh, okay, sure. I'm <laughs> very against this, but go ahead. Uh, okay. They go, what I meant the? I'm make a noise somewhere, but sure. They, they, they. <laughs> They go, what the hell are you doing here? And draw their sabers and, t- and run after just you. Run. Yeah, I'm gonna, probably just gonna, so would they both follow me? Uh, one of them follows you, one of them shouts down to the lower floor, hey, we have an intruder. Uh, while he, sh- uh, while he shouts that, is would he be considered alone? Uh, I need Viola to, yeah. Roll, run like hell. <laughs> Can I roll, roll jump to jump out of, out of an express window instead? <laughs> well, you're in the interior hallway. Okay, so that's no. Uh, not at first. You yeah, can so run, first you can run running. like hell to a window. Yeah, that's probably the goal. Any advantage, disadvantages? Um, nah. It's something you can reasonably do. Yeah. So she just heads for the next. As soon as they, she hears them yelling behind her, Viola take, takes her feet in her hand and rushes to the next best window. Yep. Uh, yeah. Roll. Roll the jump. And meanwhile, Kren. Uh, I guess you so make your move. I. Uh, as the second I'm able, I will uh run out and. Uh, automatically succeed as he would not be aware of me. Uh, roll. Uh, you you have ninety to sneak around. Yeah, you you can sneak up on the uh on the guy and uh, 
you just ought... a simple stab in the throat. Yeah, you're oh, you're oh. silent. You're a silent takedown. Silent takedown, and carve your way out together. So you just just a bit of. Uh, just then I would like to before I would like to quickly. Uh, would he have keys on him to this house? You or can the hear the the captain in the room just beyond shouting and coming towards the door. Uh, yeah, but uh, would the guard have keys? Yeah, the guard has uh, a key. You're not sure what door it opens. The bedroom door doesn't uh, seem to be locked. Uh, Quick, hide, hide on the ceiling like Spider Man. <laughs> Uh, if he's if he's uh, going to the door, uh, where's the guard that Viola ran off with? He's uh, ran off with. Uh, he is like has his head stuck out the window that Viola jumped out of at the like. There was a corner, and then to the end of the hall. There was there was a there was a window there. Viola opened up that window and jumped out of it, and now that guard's sticking his head out, going, "She's gone that way." Okay, and. One last question. Uh, would would I? Be, uh, does the door to this guy's bedroom turn inwards or outwards, so I can uh, like bar it with my crossbow? Uh, is what I want, would like to do. Actually, if it just opens that. outward, all you need is just to be standing on the other side of the door, so he doesn't see. Yeah, but I, I can't. And it opens inward. Wait. Damn. Okay. Wait. Wait. I'd, wait, I'd be able to bar it. Like if I put so the, no one else can come in after you. I grab my crossbow and just put it across the handle into the door. That'd be able to somewhat bar it. Yeah. Using a crossbow bolt to basically. No, no, the crossbow itself. The crossbow, the crossbow. itself. A hand crossbow. A hand crossbow is not big enough to bar an entire door. Wrap your belt uh, around it. <laughs> it is. It is basically a a a pistol sized weapon. A bit, nice. b- bit bigger uh, than a pistol, but it's not like. You are not lugging around a giant crossbow. It's it's something it's, you can hold in one hand. It's not a heavy crossbow. I right, I'll then I'll just lift up the crossbow, aiming it towards the door and waiting for him to open it. <laughs> uh, the door opens uh, a crack, and he sort of out of the you know in through the crack of the door. Uh, he sees the point of your crossbow bolt aimed at the door, and he tries to slam the door shut again. Like, oh, f- crap. Uh, can I slide? <laughs> uh, I'll just say, I'll be with you with the, uh, in a moment, sir, and then I'll go and tr- uh, run towards wherever Viola uh, jumped out of and try to push that guy out of a window. <laughs> uh, the guard. So he doesn't become a problem. Uh... Okay, you can. Um, this is quickly turning into a Benny Hill skit. <laughs> very deadly Benny Hill skit. Uh, a sneak of around to with two disadvantage die to because you're to see if you can sneak up on him because they're already alert. It's successful with one disadvantage. All right. Uh, so you manage to sneak up on the, uh, other guard, interior guard, uh, and push him out the window, and he goes, ah, uh, it doesn't kill him, but he's, he's gonna have a sore back for a while, he's not getting up anytime soon, uh, but the disadvantage is, uh, the captain, uh, storms out of the, out of the, uh, room behind you, uh, now donned with his uh with some armor and his uh his saber and very much aware of you um, at least aware that you're somewhere else you're in the house okay interesting um is uh, where i am is it just a straight hallway no there's a, there was a corner in the hallway there, yeah but uh what I'm asking is, is, is there any uh, way to get around without going, uh, get around him without going to the, where I, from where I came? Uh, not without either going downstairs or going outside the building. Could I, uh, and I'm just thinking, uh, to Assassin's Creed my way from one window to the his bedroom window. You'd probably have to go around, like, you know. 
a third of the building for that, but uh, yeah, you could uh, be climb with uh, I'm gonna say disadvantage or challenge die. All right then. Uh, same success with one. Um, I'm gonna say that you managed to you know hop around from handhold to handhold on the outside of the building until you maneuver around to the bedroom window and climb in. But uh, just before you managed to climb in, a uh, couple of the guards on the outside who were searching around for Viola, they spot you. And he's like, he's up there. He's climbing back into the bedroom. Uh, I'd like to wave to them as I uh, hop into the bedroom. You do so. They are pissed off. <laughs> All the waving mummers. It's It's the mummer way. <laughs> Worst assassin ever. Leaf, hey, I'm a thief. I don't distract people. It's off. not my. I I meant make a noise in some part of the house. I didn't mean walk in front of them. This, the, uh, the, the, the Looney Tunes the worst of- uh, <laughs> the definition of distraction. Just walk up yeah. to them and run. <laughs> you are the worst assassin I've ever heard of, but you have heard of me. No, I haven't. Shit. All right, so you're you're back in the captain's bedroom, and uh, it is he's it is currently empty because the captain's outside looking for you. But you hear you hear footsteps uh, coming in through the front door on on the first floor, as well as uh, you know coming down the hall, but stopping before they actually reach the door. Uh, I'd like to uh, pop my head out through the uh, hall, uh, hallway, look left to right to see where the captain is. The captain uh, is off to the left, and he sees you as you poke your head out. <laughs> He's like, God damn it! <laughs> uh, uh, and then I'm just going to start walking towards him calmly. He, what? he brandishes his saber and uh, you know, holds it in a ready position. Uh, I'd like to get as uh, I'd like to get clo- as close as I can without uh, giving him, uh, like, before I get into him, his sword reach. Uh, uh, like, I'd like to get somewhat close to him. But not so close that he can just stab me. Um, That's not very far, so you're basically standing at opposite ends of the hallway. Because he could just lunge at you. But uh, And say... Uh. I'm sorry for my friend making it uh, this much more awkward than it should have been, but uh, I do like a good bit of fun, and I'd like to get two knives and just start th- and yeah, just start throwing knives. I have five of them. Um, let's I'd like see. to throw a knife. Uh, weirdly, is there a throw something skill? I don't know. There's a shoot and a stab. Well, those are your options if you want to use those skills then. Well, I will. They're the same percentage. Um, yeah, just I'll just say stab someone with the throwing knives. Uh, any disadvantages or advantages? Uh, no, because this guy's not a minion. All right. Well, that is a sixty. That is a sixty-eight. And so your knives managed to. Your your throwing knives. Let's see. It's oh, she's. So, uh, your knives, before he can even make his own attack, you know, he tries to lunge for you, you manage to stab him in some very critical locations, uh, and he just doubles over his leather armor, not really holding up to your sharpened blades, and he staggers and groans, and he's probably, you know, even if these were the only wounds he took, he probably, he's probably gonna bleed out, but he manages just enough strength to take a swipe at you with his saber. Which, uh, succeeds and, uh, you take 26 luck damage. Alright. He manages to to slash at your, your clothes. But 26 damage? Yep. Alright. Uh, and then it's uh, your turn again. Uh, I'd like to sigh at the, him ripping my clothes, and I, really like, I'm, I'm very sorry, but that was not polite. And I want to run up and, uh, since he slashed at me, he's relatively close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I'd like to try and grapple his sword out of his hand. Probably just stab him with it. 
Just, uh, yeah, roll to stab someone. <laughs> the extra damage is to his ego. <laughs> Oh, geez, 64. Yeah, he is, uh, you managed to, in his, wrestle the sword out of his weakened grip and just stab him through with it, run him through. And, uh, while, while stabbing him with his sword, I'd like to say, see, you don't like it, do you? This is way worse than what I did. <laughs> and he falls to the, the floor of the hallway that, a goofy ending to to a goofy assassination attempt, and then the other the other two uh, guards uh, see the captain's dead body and the nearby blooded soldiers nearby uh, uh, dead body, and you standing over basically both of them, and they go, "You bastard!" and start running towards you. Uh, I'll sigh, and uh, now I have a bag of I have a bag of soot. How much? I'd like to ask how much soot I have. Like, would it be enough to just have, just throw and spray around the room, and then just uh, to like completely get in their faces and eyes and stuff? Uh, don't you have caltrops with you? Don't don't have what? Caltrops. Cattle trops. Uh, not in my equipment. I, I I is it the thief or the assassin? The caltrop. I don't remember. I have lockpicks. I could have swore somebody gets. Bag of soot to dull the gleam of steel weapons. Yeah, you could just reach into that bag and just mum or vanish. Just just pocket (laughs) sand them. Uh, I'd like to say he is an escape artist. This is what he does. (laughs) As his day job. Um, Tells bad jokes and throws sand people. (laughs) Yeah, this is... He he throws sand people? What? Yeah. If he ever reaches Tatooine, he will. I'm gonna say, yeah, just run like hell. Alright. run like hell. Sixty-five. No, oh, no. Hmm. You might want to push your luck, mate. Actually, I need to. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you push your luck here. I'm not sure if because we're in a combat encounter, you're allowed to. But I'll let you push. I'll let you push thirty and. uh get out of there thank you oh i will do so all right uh and i'll say uh you 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 throw a handful of soot and just just spread it into their eyes and they go ah crap and you just jump out a window or something and dash away before reinforcements come yes all right one dead blooded sailor captain in the I'm never bring Viola on one of these again. <laughs> in the what? least stealthy way possible. I mean it it worked perfectly. I distracted one of them. I did everything you asked. <laughs> to the letter even. <laughs> the letters weren't good enough, clearly. Well, I'm, I feel I'm, like we can't I feel like we can't trust our murmurs to actually silently kill people. I'm very good at killing people. I'm just <laughs> that one was not my fault. I mean, Never they are fault. they are dead, <laughs> but also everyone in the blooded knows that they're dead now and that they were attacked. So that's going to have an effect. In fact, I need to I need to check heat for that. Ouch. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Jack from just barging in and killing everyone would probably be more subtle than that simply because there would be no living witnesses. You have a point. <laughs> yeah. But you didn't. But you left witnesses. <laughs> For one thing. No, that, that that's what he's saying. Jackram's case, he probably would have ended up killing it. I was being nice and not killing everybody. You're a bad assassin, then. <laughs> Either you kill the one dude, or you kill everyone. You don't leave witnesses. <laughs> That's ugly. Oh, jeez, where is... Okay, there we go. Uh, doop de doop de do The crew commits a noisy crime. The crew leaves behind significant... Well, no. I'm just going to add two extra heat for 
making a noise a crime. Bringing us up to 22. Fun. Uh, I did not add a whole lot for conspicuousness because a couple people were disguised. Although... Nah, I'll go easy. Uh, there's, there's already 22 on the pile. Uh, so that, that ends the uh, legwork scene. Which I guess just yep. leaves the uh, the drama scene in the mor- in the morning. Yep. yep. Oh boy, here we go. All right, it is time. It is time to steal the opal. You've got your crew. You've got your disguises. First thing, bright and early, you uh, gather all your people up. You go to uh, Viola's mum or contact, and you get them all dressed up, all fitted for the costumes, and uh, you know. Uh, made up with the uh, blooded, you know, temporary makeup and, and ta- you know, tattoos, whatnot. You know, actually, pretty decent work for for a rush job. And then you all start just marching towards the dock where the blooded and the opal are waiting. When you get close by, uh, they are kind of on high alert. I wonder why. Kind of. <laughs> How can you be kind of on high alert? I say kind of because a bunch of the day crew is still kind of hung over because of Jack Rim's interference, but there are actually there actually seem to be more of them than there were the last time Viola cased the joint. And there seem to be a couple extra capos on the scene. You know, a couple of guys that are like seem to be really in charge and, and bossing and yelling at the others. And then you all, your crew, uh and your crew all walk up to the entrance to the docks, all dressed up, and uh, basically you guys are stopped at the at the entrance to to the yard, and a couple of blooded there goes, hey, who, what's all this then? What's this about? Out of curiosity, are any, any of the guys? Out of curiosity, are any of the guys? there anyone from the bar last night um one of them you do recognize from the bar last night does jack curl will just sort of know his way just like yeah i heard yeah nice to see nice seeing you doing all right from last night um heard that there was a lot of shit going down and i decided to get some boys together sound like you needed some help well you did all that all on your own yep oh you're you're really gunning for a capo position huh I want a gun, damn it. <laughs> Jackram goes the entire campaign, never gets his gun. But you're you're a brawler. You, you're not <laughs> supposed to have a gun. <sighs> he doesn't shoot it. He just beats people with it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say roll to lie to someone, which is not yes. on your list. Uh, can I at least get... Can I at least get some sort of advantage or something simply because they rec- Yeah, because you, you set yeah. this up and you're you're playing it. Uh, you're taking advantage. I'm going to say, yeah, two advantage die. I'm sitting there looking very... Trying to look as intimidating as possible. With my and menu Viola and does too. Like, um, it's was E5 stretching for... up all the acting classes she still remembers. <laughs> Ow. Um, it's E5 for... For the uh, for the for the confirmation Advantage? code, yeah, the the success face code, yeah. Yeah, so that's five. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna push my luck. Um. Hmm. If I'm going to take the thirty points of luck damage to let make this work, if you will let me. I need to refresh myself on how push your luck works. Yeah, so do I actually. Pushing your luck. Doop to do. Push your luck only when making a check that isn't an attack, unless you have a character benefit that says otherwise. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I'm the only one that actually has has uh, that I can push my luck. When uh, Oblivious can push your luck when slashing, stabbing, or striking someone. Uh, Strong Copper can push when making a mental attack to goad, intimidate, or frighten someone. Uh, since I did ask you to lie to someone, which is in this case a mental attack because they are skeptical. I'm going to say no, you can't push your luck. Yeah. So I'm going to say he kind of 
looks at you like, that's still a lot of people. I don't know, something ain't right. Does someone else want to try taking a stab at lying to him or convincing him? Um, can I take? Can I try uh, a different can approach? I or... to, can I try to distract him from the? No, no, no we saw what happened please. last time. No. <laughs> can I try a different approach? Can I just start, try and double down instead of lying to him? Just go to intimidate. Just go up and just like, are you trying? Are you trying to stop stop me from making a good impression, you little punk? Uh, yes, you may. Uh, well, let's see. Can I also help them with this? You can assist to give an advantage, and yeah, intimidate someone with uh, one advantage. Yeah, now that I think about it, we haven't gotten a single advantage in our thing, have we? You've gotten one or two here. That's there. much better. There you go. That is much better. So you get right up in his face, and you, and you make this big old power play, and he just sort of back us down and is like, Okay, you know what? You want to stick your neck out? Fine, just come on through, I guess. And smart you, lad, smart lad. You managed to. Decker will lead his crew through. Uh, you managed to to march your guy, your 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 crew towards the ship. But as you start uh, climbing up the the planks, of the dock. Uh, this uh, let's see. Where is the guy I'm looking for? There you go. Uh, this sort of uh, thin, uh, wiry man, pointy nose, tattoos all over the sides of his head and neck, uh, and uh, hair shaved on the sides. He sort of strolls up to you, hands in pockets, and and he says, uh, "Oh, reinforcements, huh?" And this yeah, guy, this guy this guy definitely looks like uh sort of one of the men in charge here. Not not a not a sailing expecting. captain, but uh definitely uh a pers a person in a position of power in the blooded cartel. Yeah. Just Jack Rule turned just said, Yeah, I heard there was some tr- heard there was some trouble going down, so I decided to get get some boys together. Huh, how forward thinking of you. Well, you should probably uh spread you guys around on the docks then make sure no one gets in. We got enough people on the ship. Hmm. Jack Rowan just sort of glanced towards the ship to actually see if this is actually the case. He uh, sort of takes another step forward. And even though he's not brandishing a weapon or, uh, or you know, being outwardly threatening, you do feel somewhat intimidated as he says, oh, by the way, that wasn't a suggestion. Uh, you take 30 mental damage of luck. Oh, he's on twenty. Which which Zachram can't back down from this. This is the blight, can I? Even if he is a superior, just backing down is right away is a very bad. Makes you look weak. Punch him in the face. Uh, uh, dear no. Oh. Yeah. Oh. oh. Hmm. Yeah, we, we bubbled our way through the last bit, so we can't bubble up the finish. All right. Jackram's gonna try and try and distract him. Just basically, basically start an argument with it. A bit of an argument with him. In order to distract him while the, you guys do what you guys need to do. I need to get on this ship. Hmm. And I don't know. If, about... And if you could happen to kill this son of a bitch, if, and if very quietly without that. anyone seeing it, that would be great. Alright, so. Also do that yeah, this plane is becoming increasingly too forward. Mm. Besides, yeah. you only have like twenty luck. If something else happens to you, you might. Go. You'll start I taking know, wounds. But... Hmm. But yeah, I can try to distract him. I was gonna go in, try to goad him, but not sure. Actually, goading him into an argument would probably count. If he gets to, if it's a. Dis- would it be distra- that kind of distraction, or would it actually just go with distracting someone? Um, what, whatever you choose. I'll go with goad. I'll go with goad. My better one. If I screw it up, I'll, at least, I'll lose less luck. All right. How many advantages or anything, or just straight up? Um, no, just straight up. On Ooh. the freaking dot. Eighty out of eighty. Ooh. Yep. Nicely, nicely done. Oh. 
That's success. <laughs> he, so what? What are the, what's the kind of thing you say in this situation? What, what's the what's the general gist of what you're trying to say as you're trying to goad him? Don't don't say I should be listening to you. <laughs> yeah, I heard from heard from us heard from some of the other from the other guys that guys that we need more people on this ship. Mm. Just basically standing up to him is kind of the thing. Mm. Mm-hmm. And he sort of takes another step closer to you. You're now standing like less than a foot apart, just staring d- down his long pointed nose at you and says, oh, you really need to know your betters if you're going to last much longer in this cartel. He, he doesn't take his eye off the crew, but he does seem pretty darn goaded. And this, I, I might as well point out that we're in now a drama scene. This is a dramatic enemy. Uh, and you dealt 80 mental damage to him with that. <laughs> so other people can make mental attacks as well, going around like, say, uh, Oblivious. Yeah, we're, we're, we're now in turn order, so I'm going to say uh, uh, Creeper Zone. Or, right, so it was Strong Copper who just did that, right? Yes. yes. So Creeper Zone, you can make a mental attack. I, uh, uh, hmm. Or take I take some take some other action. Uh, so he's still keeping his eye on us, right? Yeah, he's not he is not distracted or you know convinced yet. Uh, let me think. Uh, what what could we? Do? I, I mean, I we probably uh, mental attack would be the smart thing to do. I'm just figuring out how do I would do that. Um, uh, I'm gonna try. Uh, uh. I'm gonna uh, like stand beside uh, Jackram, uh, and, like, and uh, go talk. Tell him. Well, hold, hold on, but before before we before we do anything, I want to I want to try to get a read. On. What do you mean, try to get a read? As as in the the whole motions, to see if he's he's hiding something we don't know. I mean, what, you mean slice him up or something? Well, I yeah, I, I, I'm I'm, ba- I'm basically look I'm looking for I'm I'm looking. Looking for you know any any tells sign of weaknesses something something that you can't tell just from cursory. He seems kind of unflappable. He's he's still very calm. Uh, I'd like to actually yeah I'm going to try s- scare him. I'm going to go uh, stand beside Jackram and tell him, well you know what happened uh, to the captain. There are people all in power don't stay very long, and my friend here. Uh, he. Re- how how do I word this? Yeah, this is difficult. Uh, um, I should point out you don't have intimidate someone on your skills, Karen. Oh, damn it! Right, right. Mm. You have gold someone and the light to someone, and those are at sixty five. I'd like to, and you can push, and you you can push your luck when making a mental attack to convince or lie to someone. Okay, I'd like to lie to him, trying. I'm going to try to tell him that uh, uh, Jackram was actually uh, going to be prom- uh, promoted before the captain got, uh, you know, uh, ab- uh, butchered last night. That he he was actually supposed to be promoted, so uh, he might not be his superior uh, for that much longer. Oh, interesting. All right. Uh... You know, that, that's a, that's a better idea than I gave you credit for, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying Same to here. somehow word that. That's. Uh... <laughs> I'll just roll. Roll dice. I think would it, the fact that I was able to get a, such a big mob together also kind of lead credence to that? It would. Uh, <laughs> yeah, roll. Yeah, just give you an advantage on that. Because it is true, the captain did <laughs> kill. Ooh, 89. Uh, well, for, every, for, every, for every, every 10 luck you spend, you can Increase your chance of success by twenty. Down, I can push it down to sixty nine, um, and that still wouldn't be I enough. Have. So you'd have to spend That'll twenty luck to reduce it by forty. Yeah. Is that what you want to do? I only have. Well, if I was if I reduce it by forty, it won't be enough still. Oh right, no, it would. Yeah, you're right. It wouldn't be enough. Oh wait, wait. Oh no, no I missed math. No, it would be enough. 
if it's 4d9. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, it's like, uh, I think yes, you're, I, doing, think you're doing the math 20. wrong. I'll use 20 lock. lock. So you go down to zero? <laughs> I'm at four. Oh, you're at four. All right. Four lock. All right. And uh, so that's 49. And he sort of, an eyebrow, black eyebrow quirks up and he says, oh, that sounds quite impressive. And you're not sure uh, what he thinks about that yet, that yet, but he's still not taking his eye off you. So oblivious. Good question. Should I? Uh, my my highest skills are convincing or sorcery. Hmm. That might sorcery definitely affects. I mean, you're you're a magist. You're you specialize in affecting minds and emotions. I guess I guess what I could do. It's hard, isn't it? Oh yeah, I know that. That's that's why I've been pretty quiet. It's like I'm I'm trying to choose my moves carefully because I I don't I don't want to bumble into a into a luck based minefield. Um, I'm also trying to think how to word it exactly. Um, because I I guess I guess I could try to could try to play off play off of his his paranoia and try to try to get him to yield like that. But I'm not sure what the unintended consequences might. Be. We might end up in a worse position. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder if maybe we can. Uh, brain is loading. Uh, Use your words. Well, we we already we already brought the brought up the fact that the captain is dead. I I wonder. Uh, I wonder if we wonder if we add to the fact that you know we got got foreign. Foreign port authorities are watching for this stuff too, because that that actually is something that happened. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could use that that to convince them instead of using sorcery. Because if I if I enchant, that's going to be possible for challenge dice. So mm -hmm. yeah, make your decision, man. Oh well, I'm kind of I'm kind of asking the party what they, th or you can make a decision. <laughs> you know what? Do what I, you need I, to do, man. Do what you need to do. Yeah, whatever you I, feel is right. <laughs> you, you know what? Screw it. We've we've been going whole hog this whole time. His enchantment, because I don't know if he's gonna. I don't know if he's gonna buy that anyway. So, uh, enchantment. Describe how your sorcery affects their minds or emotions. Uh, yeah. What what are you what are you going for here? Uh, basically, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to make him uh make him or uh. Uh, make them uh, far more uh, more submissive and yielding to our to our suggestions, you know, because we already kind of kind of weakened his his position a little bit with that uh, with that eighty mental damage, and I kind of want to drive that point home because it's like you know, hey, we already lost a captain, we're you know we're already expecting trouble. All right, um, roll use sorcery with four challenge die. <sighs> oh, I haven't helped me. Uh, let's see, it is. Is one D is it one D E uh E five? One D ten E five. Or four D ten E five rather. Yeah. It's, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Two drawbacks. Suggest to me some cost or consequences of this sorcery. Um Yeah, that, you, that's you what do, I was worried you about. You do succeed. You you will succeed in making him a bit more uh, I guess submissive to your argument, but as an unintended consequence, what two things happen, or what thing worth two drawbacks happens? Let's see. Uh, it would probably it probably make him probably make him more erratic. Probably uh, hinder our plans a bit. Um, be something. Else. I'm not uh, sure if submissive and erratic really go hand in hand. I'm not sure how uh, to play that. Good point. Uh, shit. Um, um, just a idea, just putting it out there, just as a suggestion. Has he, has your Magnus actually told any of us that he's got, that he can do magic? I imagine he's doing it, it from the back of the group. Yeah. I, I, well, I, I don't, I don't make, I don't make it particularly well known. That's what I'm. Mm. I, I think, I think he would have 
I think if, you know, anyone at any point asks, so what do you do? You'd kind of have to be honest about it so that, you know, people know what you can do. Well, I'm I'm aware of that, but I'm saying I don't exactly I don't exactly broadcast that to the world. Yeah. Well, I was just going to suggest maybe one of the drawbacks could be Yeah, you've done Yeah, you've done this, but something seems off of what you've just did. You need to be specific. Yeah, I'm I know. Saying, I'm, 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 I'm just thinking maybe is that uh, other people notice that that was what just happened was not normal. You did something, this guy changed dramatically, what the hell? You want the drawback to be that it was noticeable that you cast sorcery? Uh, not exactly, no. Um, I mean, it's a good idea for me. I would accept that. And I don't want you guys to take forever on this. Yeah, I know, I'm thinking, thinking, shit. Come back on the Seven Seas job, part 27, when we finally get on the boat. <laughs> Seriously, God help no. me. Uh... Uh, any any other suggestions by chance? I'm drawing a blank. Sorry. Oh, that's it. I'm I'm taking that one. I'm taking that suggestion. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, that he doesn't know. Well, okay. The crew around you would definitely notice that you just cast magic on this guy, and the. The capo experiences a visible wave of dizziness and before he he finally just looks back at you and says, I su- <sighs> suppose that could be reasonable, but he doesn't seem totally convinced yet. Like, he's still holding out just a little bit longer, which I guess leaves uh, Sonny's action. Well, is he still standing now? Yeah, he's still standing in your way. But he he looks close to cracking. Uh, could I um, could they all go with a uh, um, point someone out that looks at least similar to uh, an uh, actual normal city authority like um, the, like the words yeah, like the Dark police or the port authorities and go wait are those guys on and go like wait. I think they're noticing us. No, to... you're you're pretty deep into the blooded docks at this point. Okay, so there's. Huh. I'd recommend making a mental attack to convince or lie to someone, because that that would would allow you to push your luck if you need to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and I'm. So that just leaves the question: What are we? Is Viola going to tell him to to reinforce the point that yes, we should go on board? Uh. Doesn't have to be a complicated lie. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, we're having trouble with simple lies. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. You guys need more practice right. lying. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, but she's probably going and with, uh, is moving up because she was somewhere in the middle of a pick. Just goes. So, can we go on, to, on a ship? We were we were told we were security for for a ship, not for the docks. And I posing mean, as mean, one of the hired help. I mean, you could lie and say that the the that the uh, guards don't look good enough, or something like that. Like it, like it's not enough. Yes, yeah, so, uh, somewhat along those lines. Like she's one of us, uh, posing as one of the hard having but we are much better than them. Let us go on there. We can do that much better. Uh, not quite what I was going with, but yeah, but... just just roll lie to someone. Yeah, yeah, I'm probably going to push my luck twice. So. Because I only have a 65. That... Yeah, you'll have to push your luck twice to get that down to 47. Yeah, yeah I'll do that. It's, I still have 50 luck left, luck left over. All right. So, at last, thanks to uh, Oblivious's enchantment and goading him and lying to him before, he finally... He, his whole posture seems to change. He sort of slouches, almost full, you know, you know, his posture sort of folding in on himself, and he you know, with his hands stuck in his pockets, and he takes a couple steps back, looking aside, saying, "Okay, fine, just just get get on board before something else happens." And he walks away from you to to go order around someone else to make himself feel better. <laughs> and oh, I'm I'm, I'm also going to I probably should have announced this earlier, looking back, but uh, I'm going to take twenty heat off the pool because that was a major villain. <laughs> 
Wait, really? Yeah. Whoa. Well, I mean, hey, at least we didn't get shot like last time. So yeah, he, he dealt we, he yeah. dealt thirty mental damage to you out of the gate. Oh yes, he did. And had yeah, but and but had we didn't get shot. That's the important. Had nearly you know two hundred luck. So he did have mind bolts. I'll give you that. Mm. All right, let's just get on the damn boat. Yeah, I, I would like to walk on the boat. Phrases yeah. you you would normally not hear in it. <laughs> since yeah, since you have, you have now been given the all, all clear, he he made like a signal gesture to the onboard crew before you walked on. You guys all walk in onto the opal, uh, just you know, totally free, uh, unobstructed. All right, what's the plan on taking this thing over? Um, probably just try go, getting the ship out of the dock, and then so we can so they. Guards on board can't get any help and then start knocking them out. Simple but effective. Mm. Also, good chance to spread our, our own boys through the ship a bit to get an idea of just how many people we need to take out. Yeah. While um, we're doing that, you, you you take a quick tour of the of the schooner, and there's about uh, ten blooded thugs that are just sort of milling about, keeping an eye on eye on things, including the cargo. Mm. What is the cargo out of curiosity? Or, it's all, or is it's it all, all crates and barrels. Morning, if anything, just obviously stuck out, like just something weird. Nah, mm. just your standard smuggling operation. Um, is there anyone clearly in charge, like a new temporary captain, or are they just sort of milling around, waiting for someone to start yelling at them? Yeah, everyone who is obviously in charge is on the land right now. So... Can Jackram just go and I'm the new go full? I'm the new uh, capo. Pretty, that's what I'm pretty much gonna do. Just basically start yelling at people to get the ship move, get the ship ready to go. Yeah. He's in charge now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say either go to someone or intimidate someone with three challenge dice and one advantage. Can we assistance anyway? Um, if you can describe a way in which you assist. Uh, I mean, maybe maybe go around to the. It, in the, the individual like, guards, the like start like preparing the ship. So yeah, it looks like we're following orders. So other yeah, that's yeah. Not, just yeah. start immediately. Start following his orders to make it look official. Yeah. yeah one right. mod's sta- one mod starting to fix the ship up, then might coach sailors make them think that's legit. Sure. Uh, roll me that check with three and three. Okay. One and one, so they cancel each other out, and you succeed on a twenty. <laughs> so you 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 intimidate the other the other the rest of the blooded the legit blooded crew into just sort of going along with uh, because you've got you've got the others just sort of like following your orders that you're barking out anyway. So like, uh, okay, just just play along. Don't get yelled at. Don't get yelled at. <laughs> so, is there any? Just out of curiosity, is there anyone that's being a bitch? Hesitant to follow because I'm happy to punch someone out in order to make an example. I think that's part of your your intimidate ch- check is just you know someone lags behind and you just walk up to them. It's, and it's like meaning, it's like, meaningfully here. slamming your fist into your palm. It's like ho- hoist the mizzen mask. What is big English to what? And yeah, go from there. Uh, hmm. so you start you know casting off the ropes uh mooring it to the dock and uh that causes some alarm on the land but by that point you've already uh withdrawn the plank so they can't do anything <laughs> and uh, you know your your real crew has already rigged up the sails and you are drifting out to sea I'd- I'd like to just be uh to that guy that was trying to stop us to get on the boat just be standing on the edge and just uh, flipping him the crow, or also known as the bird. <laughs> well, you did, well, just 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 stand there with your arm crossed. Yeah, your namesake is a middle finger. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Kren the that crow Wallace. So What's Kren, Kren the crow Wallace? What's the crow? <laughs> just just I'm, the I'm, deuce. I'm I'm I'm, pi- I'm picturing like uh, he's got like an emblem where on him it's it's a crow, but it's it's actually giving the double bird. Yes, Viola's probably hanging somewhere in the rigging, maybe on the, on the way to the crow's nest. So, uh, 
as you're drifting out, uh, you know, from the land, you hear all the blooded, you know, going, what, what are you doing? Come get back here. What's, what's going on? You're not supposed to do that. And the, the blooded thugs on the ship go, wait, what's going on? <laughs> Just sort of all I'm gonna start punching the ride. I'd like to, I'd like, I'd like to, bef- once they start realizing, I'd like to find the first, uh, closest, uh, alone minion and, uh, go for the stab. Actually, I'd like to just throw him off the ship. No, that'd be. I'll, I'll, I'll say I'll just let you get the first one free, and then with Jackram, basically with you, you outnumber them now, so you can get the jump on them, and before long they are all just overboard. <laughs> the Viola's gonna get literally get the jump on, on one, dropping from the rigging onto his back and just knocking him prone. Yeah, I I definitely I can definitely see that, and and ma- many Wilhelm screams are heard in the background. Ah, 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 ah. We're just we're singing a sea shanty as we throw bodies over the wall. You what, do it here with a drunken sailor. This is what you do with a drunken sailor. <laughs> this is. I wonder, how, sailors on the I wonder ship how many of these guys actually know how to swim. Not our problem. Hopefully enough. You beat one up, you throw them off to 19 drunken sailors on the ship. Alright. So, uh, you manage to sail off with the ship before they can mobilize a response, because the Kappa was humiliated at the time. And I, I'm thinking, <laughs> and I think he might be dead after this whole thing. Is oh, like, he 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 might be very severely punished. Uh, so I mean, the blooded aren't so known win for being for us. A win for us, anyway. Hurrah! So, something that actually went Hooray! right. This time. <laughs> and I, yeah. I I managed to throw a plot twist at you, though my mistake. I should have definitely. I should have definitely. Uh, announced that I was uh spending that heat before I introduced a major villain in front of you guys but I'm I'm sorry for that. Uh, I think I think it was uh, in more interesting this way. I I don't know about that. I I definitely should have been, you know, like because of all this heat you, you know, I should have signaled that because of all the heat you guys have generated. I'm playing this guy. <laughs> Which <laughs> even though it was like a natural extension of the events you would caused, but I I still shouldn't like introduce new complications just because of you know natural events i should at least that's what the heat is for is for me to manage my responses in that way i i honestly i was expecting as i oh god it this is the actual like guy standing in our way i i'd hate to see what happens in the actual i wasn't aware that that was the actual thing hmm. see i was going with i was going was okay this guy's important i'm just thinking oh god he's one of the people who runs the and blooded, isn't it? Yeah, he's he's not just a lieutenant. He's he's a capo. He was actual leadership. Well, a keyword keyword was. I I don't know how long that's gonna last. Yeah, but you. I mean, you you got that really strong start with the goad, and I did. Oh, yeah. I was I was going off the deck of enemies, but I did nerf him a little bit because I kind of sprung him on you without warning. So, mm. uh, fair enough. But I I I I, I think uh. you guys did a good job. Anyway, yeah. so you you the captain uh takes charge of the ship because you guys don't know what you're doing. And uh <laughs> he uh, Viola does know what she's doing. She's uh, uh climbing around on the rigging. <laughs> I think Cran is probably like high just just somewhere just sitting down in the, probably like the captain's seat drinking something. Uh yeah. Just captain. Jack has joined him. <laughs> just <laughs> You're sitting in his lap? No. What? Get out of my seat. Get out of my seat. Front. You guys are playing hey, musical I chairs killed. with the captain's chair. I killed the man who owned this seat. It's mine now. That's how it works. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's Tyler I Nose. Literally, <laughs> that, 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 I that's, appara- that's, that's apparently how musical chairs works, is that whoever survives takes the chair. <laughs> Uh, and I'll also like to point out, I'm very glad at no point did I, because uh, I decided that Kren could not swim. I just decided that. So eventually I thought, yeah, I'm probably going to fall in water and drown. And I would accept <laughs> it. 
but I'd just like to make. I don't know. I th- the, the city, yeah. the city of New Dunhaven has a has a very extensive canal system. I think an assassin would would need to know to swim to take advantage of that. Dive in the water. But, Where if, but that's a, that's also your choice, and it's like you're an assassin who just never uses the waterways. No nah, man, bird birds are made to fly, not swim. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So that does <laughs> throw you off the top. Of the sail. Fly now, girl. <laughs> so you uh, you guys sail out. Uh, you had informed the Red Lotus Society before you before you embarked on on the job itself, and uh, there is a town and ship waiting at a uh, you know at a specific landmark out in the ocean, like a like a small like it was like a buoy or something, I guess. And uh, you sort of pull up next to each other, sail alongside each other for a while, uh, you know, rig each other together so that you can. Uh, create a plank to bridge the two ships and uh, your client uh, Mr. Uh, Jacob, Jacob Kahn of the Red Lotus Society uh, comes across to meet you looks around at the ship and says this definitely is the Opal and all and it's got its cargo still or as far as we know yes huh? the cargo was on it when we took when we took it anyway we're not sure if they had time to unload well the important thing is that they don't have this ship anymore, and well, didn't set the ship on fire. Was that Wait, ever part not, of the plan? We supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> we no. will. We will put it to very good use. Thank you mm. for uh, for a splendid job. I think. Um, just to share, just to inform to inform you, just so that you're aware, we I talked to a couple, talked managed to get a couple of blooded talking last night and. While I couldn't get any actual details, they did admit that their that their firearms are coming from the fact that they're stealing it from the from you guys. I'm not entirely sure exactly how, though. Well, we've no, we've been aware of some of that for a while, and hmm. to a certain extent, we're let's just say we're letting them have such dangerous, faulty weapons. Hmm. You know, so so they think they're getting something from us. Fair enough. It's your, it's your business. Decide to share it anyway. But they have goodwill and all that. Don't worry. Now that now that we can take back another part of our docks, our turf, they won't be enjoying the luxury of having pistols for too much longer. It's a well-timed mute. All right. I think that will uh, do it. For the seven seas job, hooray! Yay! Yeah. We didn't die. No, you didn't. <laughs> oh, we nearly died. We took us. We took the ship without out of harbor without much problem as soon as we got on. Yeah, generally, mm-hmm. once you do the the the, the legwork and the plan, generally they pay off. You know, you 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 create a plausible way to to get on board. <laughs> I throw some complications at you, but the plan. He had every drawback on the way there. <laughs> Seriously, uh, I think, think how many drawbacks did we end up having? A few. Oh, wow. I didn't keep track. I'm, hmm. I'm sure yeah. someone will, and then be make, like, "You playing this wrong," and I'm like, eh. <laughs> "I'm still, I'm still learning the system." To be fair, we, we'll, 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 the players will get better. The judge will get better. Yeah, oh. good job, and uh, yeah. Oh, it's nice to have uh, this one done. Now I just need to get the bookworm job done with uh, Obsidian Coin, and then I can open up the rules and the structure of this whole thing, because I've got some ideas. I think I know how I'm going to do it now. Ooh. Any, uh, Looking forward to it. Any, any previews of that? Um, there's there's actually... Look at the there's a, Sorry. I'm... There's actually you could, you rules could. in the uh, for campaign play. Uh, in the full player's handbook, there's, there's, uh, they have some interesting suggestions for how that works. And basically, you can have like the core founding members of a crew, but if people want to like change characters, as long as uh, half of the founding members are part of a job, it's still a crew job. So, like the Justice League, but you know, with thieves. Yeah, and <laughs> and then and then we'll, we'll also there so also the be Injustice people. League. So there, there will also be, you know, there's will actually be tracking XP and story conflicts, which are a whole, a whole new system that should be pretty interesting. 
So I can't wait. Uh, but yeah, that'll, same. yeah looking, but, really looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, thanks for playing. Thanks for listening, everybody. For you know, however long it's been since we last did this. It's, it's just it's just yeah. a little little over. Two hours. Uh, like yeah. Like I'm two sure hours, you, fifteen maybe. If you if you cut out the ahs and ums, it's probably an hour and a half. It'll come back. It'll come down to about if an you hour. Cut out the ahs and ums. It'll probably be like ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> not 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 that fast. <laughs> uh, ow, ow, my sides hurt. Oh. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised it went through so quickly. Honestly, I was um, expecting I mean, another hour. Yeah. Or so. it was just like two segments. I'm honestly, th- I'm honestly thinking when we do open up to the full game, I think I might uh, open up the session links from three hours to four because I feel like we're not smart enough to plan quickly. <laughs> yeah, we, no, that's like we have <laughs> didn't quite have enough time the first time, and now we had like way too much time. We did, weren't stuck every second decision. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, that's kind of what I feel like is that if I if I gave it just another hour or so we could finish these in one which would be preferable especially if we end up having delays like for this one. Mm. Yeah. I I, I know that would that would mess with a lot of people's schedules and whatnot but I feel like it's mm. Anyway, that, this is just stuff I'm, consi- I'm I'm considering right now just giving you guys a preview of that. Uh it's probably time for us to call it a day. So uh, thanks for listening to Dusk City Outlaws or Tales of New Dunhaven or whatever I end up calling this. Uh, thank you, Creeper Zone, Oblivious, Sonny, and Strong Cooper. Uh, Strong Copper, not Cooper. <laughs> my my little brother's been playing the Sly games, so I've got Cooper. That's fine. I've got Cooper on the brain. Well, that that and I keep saying Cooper every time I mean Copper. Yeah, and uh, uh, I also often enough go uh, think think Cooper instead of Copper. <laughs> and. Yeah, See you guys next time. Thanks for listening.